Today we have an interesting case study, uh, 90, 1995 Volvo 940, uh, rough idle and misfire at light cruise, and pinging under load, even under light load, very heavy pinging, and no diagnostic trouble codes. And you can tell by the numbers on the windshield that this is a used car lot vehicle. Now this vehicle has been to the wholesale auction a few times, apparently because no one can figure out what's wrong with the car. Now at first glance I notice a lot of parts have been replaced. Um, all the ignition components have been replaced and a shiny new cylinder head. Along with two ECMs laying on the passenger floor. Now if I hold the throttle just right, we'll see it really start to thrash around in its bounce. Yeah, right about there. I'll have to start with checking fuel pressure on problems like these. Now here with the engine idling and the regulator plugged in, our spec is 43 PSI, so we're a little on the high side. And with the regulator unplugged, it jumps about 8 pounds. So inspection of the spark plug shows it appears to be running slightly rich, but not, uh, not too black and fuzzy. So I thought next I would take a look at the oxygen sensor and the fuel control. Um, now channel A here on the blue we have our mass airflow sensor and channel B in the red we have the oxygen sensor. We can see it looks like the oxygen sensor is cycling and it is in fuel control. Now here I've captured several secondary ignition events and I've saved them as an animated GIF file and here we're replaying it. Now this was this was captured while the engine was thrashing about in its in its mounts. And nothing here that that stands out. In fact, it's almost a textbook ignition pattern. For my next capture, here on channel A in the blue, we have a sink on cylinder number one. And this is just showing the number one firing event when it happens. On channel B or the red, I have the secondary ignition right at the coil wire, so that's giving us the uh, secondary ignition for all cylinders. Uh, C on the green here, we have our crankshaft position sensor. And on channel D, the brown, we have a WPS 500 uh, pressure transducer in cylinder number one, measuring cylinder pressures. Now since our number one spark plug is not installed, I just put a, an adjustable spark tester on the number one plug wire so that we would still get our, our spike. Let's zoom in a bit here. Now I'm going to bring out a couple of vertical rulers and I'm going to put them on right on our compression peaks. So here we have framed off 720 degrees. Now often when I hear pinging, as this car is, pretty heavily, uh, I often suspect ignition timing issues. Now I can determine timing right here with the information I have on this screen. Here we have our, our number one compression peak. So top dead center is going to be approximately right at the top of that peak. And we have here, we can see where cylinder number one fired. Now to determine the number of degrees advance we have, bring up a calculator. Now we have 131.6 milliseconds 
in our 720 degrees. So 720 divided by 131.6, we'll call this 5.5 .5 degrees per millisecond. So I'm going to move this ruler right and place it right on top of our firing event. And we have 9.7 milliseconds. 9.7 multiply that times our 5.5. 53.35 degrees of advance. And that's just at idle. That seems a little excessive to me. Now there is another application available to AutoNerd's Pico Group members to help determine when an event like this takes place in degrees. I'll show you how this works. I'm going to edit, copy as image, and then I'm going to start this application called the Compression Waveform Viewer. I'm going to open image from clipboard and there's the image we were just viewing. I'm going to bring up these degree cursors, place them on our compression peaks just like we did before. And then I'm going to bring out this extra vertical ruler and place it on our ignition event and we are 53 degrees advanced. Very nice application, a huge time saver. Has many other functions also, which I'll get into at a later time. Now for those of you that don't have the WPS 500 pressure transducer, we could also use the high amp probe, the 600 amp probe, around the battery cable to get a relative compression test. Now with these current peaks representing the cylinder approaching top dead center, we could get a pretty good idea of ignition advance using that those also, uh, just not quite as precise as the WPS 500. Now according to all data, our ignition timing spec is 12 degrees before top dead center plus or minus 2 at 775 RPM, and it's not adjustable. Okay, to get an idea of what's all involved in this system, here we have number 6 is a crankshaft position sensor, and we have our flywheel with these, or flex plate with these windows, and it looks like one missing, one window missing right there. And our ignition ECU along with other information, temperature, pressure, throttle position, and others, we'll send an ignition control command to the power stage, and the power stage will then trigger the, the coil. Okay, so our crankshaft position sensor is going to generate an AC waveform like this, and then we'll use the missing window as an indicator of actual engine position. Now this flex plate does not use locating dowels and does not have any offset crankshaft bolt holes, so it can go on in any position. The service procedure says to put, place it at top dead center of number one, and we have these two pins. Pin A should be 15 degrees of the engine center line here. So I've pulled the transmission and again here I've, I've, I've put a little tilt here to our illustration because the engine is installed in a slant type of a configuration. Now we can see pin A is way up here when it should be down here. 
Now we have eight bolts holding this flex plate on. Therefore, we can rotate the flex plate in 45 degree increments. So here I've rotated the flex plate 45 degrees, putting pin A in its proper position. Okay, here's a capture I, I took after the repair and the transmission reinstalled. Let's zoom in a bit here. Okay, let's take a look at this with the compression waveform viewer. And I'll mark off our 720 again. Bring out our measurement ruler. We are now 11 degrees advanced. That's more like it. And a road test confirmed the repair. And the customer's happy. There's, there's many diagnostic paths that a, a technician could take to diagnose this vehicle. Uh, this path I chose uh, just proved to be uh, quick and efficient and it got the job done. Yeah, if you have any questions, you're welcome to contact us at autonerds.com and thank you for watching.